Hey everybody, welcome back to the Son of All Grace podcast where every single week we dive deeper and deeper into the message to help you, our church family, bridge the gap into taking the faith into your everyday life. Today on Zoom, I'm here with the legendary... Hey, I'm Dave Holmes. And uh, unfortunately, Dusty couldn't be here today. He's dealing with power outages after the recent storms, which I don't know, were they bad for you, Dave? They were not. I was surprised to see all the people without power. There's tens of thousands of people without power. It's crazy. Yeah, you know what's interesting to me is that it's like uh, it was really a non-event for me. Yeah. 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 I think I was taking a nap. I woke up because I heard the wind blow a little bit, and I was like, oh, it's raining. Oh, yeah. I went back to sleep. (laughs) I was running some errands, and I made it back in time, and I was like, oh, great. I'm glad I didn't get wet, and that was about it. Yep. Yep. So... Yeah, lots of people without power, so that's that's a bummer for Dusty. Can't make it. So uh, let's do our highlight from last week, Reverend Holmes. Your highlight? Yeah. Wow. What a what a uh, man. It was a long week, but a good week last week with uh, national conference. If you aren't familiar, our church is a part of the Caris Fellowship which is a network of churches who are like-minded with uh, their view of the scriptures and mission and all that. So this is our time of the year where we all get together as a family, a lot of the pastors and anyone's really invited. So are welcome. So you don't, you don't have to be a pastor to come, but it was in Columbus. We got a chance to talk on disciple making. We got a chance to share our story, uh, what we're doing here at Grace with the workshop with Justin Gravitt, who uh, works with us as part of the Navigators Church Ministries. And uh, yeah, so it was, a, it was a great time championing disciple making, reconnecting with friends and pastors in the, in, the, in the fellowship. And you got to go for a little bit, which was great, just to yeah. introduce you to our, our uh, larger church family that we uh, belong to. And uh, yeah. It's good. Yeah, and I, I would say for me, uh, one of the highlights of the week, um, I, actually, it was seeing you and Beth, um, because so many of the people in the fellowship just love you guys, and you guys have obviously went to Grace College, and you know the connections there. They I love, love Beth way more than me, just for the record. Well, that's true. People yeah. weren't even, apo- I mean, they weren't even apologetic about that. Nobody no. hid that or anything. No. It was like Beth no. is the rock star. Beth is awesome. Yeah. As it should be. And so I really enjoyed being there and seeing the family aspect of the fellowship. And uh, we had a great breakout with a, a guy named Johnny who uh, is, was talking about what's it mean to engage partnerships. And so I was super thankful for the opportunity to connect up there and, um, you know, Next year it's in Pennsylvania, so who knows? Who knows? Further we'll, away, we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Well, I know um, there was man. Did we get a lot of feedback about the last episode? We did get some feedback, which is which is, is great. Great. This is great. This is great. I you know I love the fact that we can talk about things that are to me secondary issues that the text is. Uh, a little bit more vague on at times and it's like well how do we how do we fill in the gap if what we know and what we don't know what does scripture say what's it silent on and uh and it's it was totally interesting i learned so much I, from from like as, as it really i mean honestly it, so a couple things to be clear about one is when we go down a rabbit hole like that we don't that's not a planned rabbit no, hole absolutely not right yeah. so it's I, I wouldn't say either one of us felt like we were like overly prepared for that moment to have that discussion i didn't i wasn't planning on asking that question and i'm sure you weren't planning on answering that question so it did i did not have it on my daily bingo card if you know what i mean (laughs) so like so uh, we we heard that there was some confusion around some of the comments that i may have said and so i wanted to take a minute uh you and, and you and i did talk about this ahead of time i wanted to take a minute to clear this up i do not pray to mary I do not pray to Mary. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to explain, apparently not in a great way, uh, a Catholic theology about uh, intercessory prayer and who can and can't do that. So um, just to clear it up, I do not pray to Mary. That's not a theology I I prescribe to. And um, and so if, if you have questions about that, about what I said and about what I meant, I'm happy. I'm so happy to talk about it with you. And, uh, and, 
And you and I both uh, have agreed that it's something that we want to lean into a little bit more. Yeah, I, I think this is anytime we can sharpen each other. Uh, what I love about uh, having you and, and Dusty and others on our team that's not from the Karis Fellowship, you know, branch, that you bring a different perspective. You guys have different backgrounds. Um, and so I love to, to hear why people believe what they believe. Now, I don't necessarily will agree with everything. Obviously, I won't. But uh, it's fascinating. I'm learning. Um, uh, and just it just helps. It helps to drive us back to the text. I think at the end of the day, it's like, OK, if it's not clear, what is the, what does the text say? What does it not say? And uh, how do you fill in the gaps when when it is silent? How do you, you know? And we do that with a lot of things, not just Mary or whoever, but we do that with so much. And it's fascinating to me of how we get to where we're at. So I think it's a good discussion. Uh, it forced me back in the text this week of like, what sure. does the Bible say? I mean, you brought up a, a thing that I just I just uh, took for granted. Like, I, you know, the discussion was, can people see and hear in heaven what's going on in earth? And I just grew up with like the reality of like in my mind was like, no, they they're they're busy enjoying Jesus and worshiping and, and doing their thing. And why would they care what's happening on earth anymore? Uh, and you challenged me on that a little bit like, well, why, you know, like, why wouldn't they see? And so uh, the, in the text, I went back to the text and there was like one instance where somebody in heaven is mentioning something happening on earth. And that's in Revelations. And um so it was like, is it time now? Are you going to bring judgment on the earth now? And that's really all, all we have. So, um, yeah. So I thought it was a really good discussion. I uh, appreciate the sharpening. I appreciate the challenge. Um, and we're not always going to agree, right? We're not always going to agree eye to eye. But these are secondary issues, which right. is, is yeah, a that's, great that's thing to, right. to wrestle with. Yeah. And I think it's also important to note that you and I have a relationship that's deeper than the podcast, right? So this isn't, exactly. we're, I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah. Obviously, Dave and I did had long talks about theology before we ever agreed that I would be a good fit for the pastoral team or the teaching team here at, at Grace. And yeah. um and so, you know, I, I'm not I'm not in disalignment with anything that Grace is about. Right. On and on the major things, right? Like it's yep. yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I think the the I think the trigger word is pray. Like that what caught, you know, like um pray to God in the name of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. That's that's kind of um what I was always taught with. So the pray yeah. to, the pray through, that was a fascinating distinction. And I was <laughs> which led to some great conversations with my Catholic friends at the Y that um that we, we got into a little bit. So I, um, I certainly used it as some dis uh, some areas to bounce off some discussions about Jesus and about theology with some of my other friends too, which is sure. for me, that's the whole purpose of long form content, right? Like it's yep. to get into some of these things and to kind of lean into areas that maybe we hadn't thought about before and yep. um, make no mistake though. I, I'm in full support of our theology and the mission and vision of Center of Grace. And Absolutely. Uh, so I, and there's yeah. nothing I've about. I've never heard you pray to Mary. Right. Encourage That's anyone right. Pray to yeah. Mary. So it's, we pray to God. Yeah, absolutely. But again, if you want to talk about what I said, I'm happy to happy to have that dialogue. And I, I know you are too, Dave. And yep. um, you know, we we want to talk about theology. It's actually it's, as pastors, you might find this funny, but we don't get to do it very often. <laughs> I know. I wish I could do it more. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> no one ever tells you you spend three years in seminary learning all this theology, and uh, and nine times out of ten, our daily uh, activities and full time vocational ministry has nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I so. I totally agree. So love to do that. Well, speaking of theology, maybe we should jump into this week's text. It was a rich Absolutely. text, a, a deep text. Uh, obviously, we're still in the Gospel of Luke. I thought you. You made a great point that this is part 1,752 uh, of our time. It, it does, man, it does feel like a long time in Luke. But we're finally in chapter 12 now. We're going to look at verses 1 through 12. Yep. Uh, if you want to read them for us, Reverend. For sure. Here, here's what Luke says. He says, Meanwhile, when a crowd of many thousands had gathered so that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. 
What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight. And what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that he can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after the killing of the body, has power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. And don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. I tell you, whoever acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. But he who disowns me before men will be disowned before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When you are brought before synagogue rulers and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at the time what you should say. I feel like we say this every single week, but it's so much it's so much text. A lot of good stuff in here, man. We could spend a lot, a lot of good stuff. It. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting. Um when we start chapter twelve. It it gives it starts with one of those in the NIV version at least it it starts with one of those key words that I think are important as each of us study scripture right and the word here is meanwhile and I'm I'm curious you know obviously chapter eleven kind of ends with this idea about the the woe to the experts of the law the this idea, this conversation with the Pharisees and the teachers of the the law. And so, meanwhile, can you kind of set the stage for us, Dave, on, yep. on what what's happening? Yep, absolutely. So Jesus had been invited to a Pharisee's house for lunch, and he uh, agrees. And so during that lunch, the Pharisees have an issue with Jesus and starts off with cleanliness um, that he didn't wash his hands. He wasn't ceremonially clean in their, in their mind as far as what should be done before you eat. And so Jesus has a bone to pick with the Pharisees and the experts of the law about how, um, yeah, just their hearts are really far from God and far from people. They're not being great leaders. And um, he, he kind of gives them uh, the woes or the judgments um, upon them as far as just this is this is really what you're missing. And uh, I'm sad for you on this. And there's going to be judgment because of your poor leadership. So uh, it says, meanwhile, that means while they're, while they're having this lunch, while they're having this discussion, this crowd hears that Jesus is showing up at, at this town and this place. And they just they just start to flock as as we would. Right. I mean, if I heard that somebody who could heal, who could, you know, fix my, my, my sister, my brother, my, my son, uh, I would want to bring, bring them to Jesus as, you know, and, and hear him and see him and touch him. And that's what people were doing. So it's interesting to me, right. Is that Jesus basically takes what was a private conversation with the Pharisees and he begins to share, um, not necessarily the conversation exactly, but he begins to share the warning, right? What he says there in verse one, be on guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, right? And so he comes out of this conversation where he's rebuking the Pharisees, and then he goes into the crowd and he begins to share this idea of this warning, right? There's yep. That there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known, Um. I'm wondering if you could give some thought on to like, why is Jesus now taking something that was kind of a intense situation at, at, at the meal and now taking it out to these crowds of thousands? Well, it's interesting that there's the crowds of thousands. And yet Jesus, it says he, he, who did he speak really to first? He was speaking to the disciples. Like, so this was uh, another teachable moment. Jesus has lots of teachable moments for the disciples. And here was just another one. And uh, there's, a, there's a, a great juxtaposition going on where, um, you know, Jesus recognizes he just got out of dealing with the Pharisees and he needs to teach uh, the disciples why he was so harsh and why he was so stern with the Pharisees. And he has to, like, get to the heart of things with them and, and explain some stuff. 
Uh, but he also is recognizing the crowds have gathered and they are for Jesus at this moment. There's no one anti-Jesus. They're coming for Jesus, to hear Jesus, to be healed by Jesus. Uh, but he recognizes those crowds are going to turn at some point, at some point very soon. And, uh, and so he is preparing his disciples how, how not to be like the Pharisees, but also how to deal with the crowds uh, and be true to Jesus and be authentic to following Jesus. And so he takes this opportunity. All these things are happening. He says, let's, let's have some, this is, a, this is a great opportunity to teach, a, a teachable moment right here for all things that are happening that's going on. Yeah, one of the things I appreciate about um, this scene and many scenes like it throughout the text is that Jesus, this is how Jesus does re- intentional, relational, and reproducible disciple making. Yep. Yeah. So th- the meal, the woe to you part, that's not really what we would call intentional disciple making. That's that's just education. That's Jesus educating people and what we would call discipleship. He's teaching them about the the laws. The moment he steps out and then he begins to talk to the disciples and he's like, "All right, come in here close, friends. Like this is now we're going to get into the good stuff." Like This is the intentional disciple making. It's these kind of moments built over Jesus's lifetime that prepare the disciples in addition to the teaching, but prepare the disciples to be sent out into the world. Yeah. You know, you and I are both uh, regular teachers of scripture. How does this look like in your life? Like when you, uh, when you wrestle with the text, like you have in this one, and, and now you're going to go use it. How do you use it to disciple someone? Like Jesus' technique in here? Yeah, Jesus' technique. I'm curious, like, how, how do you how do you model some of that same stuff? That may be an unfair question. I'm I'm happy to answer it first if it's easier. Yeah, I would, you know, I think, I think if, and I'm not great at this, so I don't want to put myself on some sort of pedestal or platform, but I think when you can take people uh, into your spaces in life and, and uh, invite them in into your everyday life and, and what you're dealing with and they can see it and you can teach that like here's why I do what I do um, I think that is s- so powerful for someone who's uh, maybe newer to the faith or still trying to learn how to do some things uh, if you can invite them into your spirits and that's what that's what Jesus was great at like he just took his disciples everywhere and in those moments, he could turn and say, listen, uh, here's what's going on. Here's how to respond. Here's here's what to look forward to. He could see around the corner like nobody else. Right. He, he could he could see way beyond what was about to happen. And he says, let me prepare you for this. And I think when we can do that with people, the better we can do that, the more we can do that, our, our better our disciple making is going to work out. Yeah, I think that. Uh, another way to think about this too is that the messages that you are prepared to give to others um, will the messages on your heart like will 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 go really go a long way in helping you disciple people. Yeah. So like when I'm when I'm in a text, like when I'm really studying a text, if I'm discipling someone and I'm um, it's going to come out right. Like it's the meditations of the heart become you know what what the mouth speaks. And so I think this is another reason why it's so important as we mature in the faith to be in the word all of the time, right? Daily, because when yeah. we're in the word daily, you know, it it really does force us to talk more about the word because yeah. I I mean, listen, I'm I really do believe that like I, I'm 24 hours away from like getting off track at any given moment. And so being in the word on a regular basis is such a huge key. And I, I think that we see this with Jesus and his his meditations and the way he talked to the Pharisees and um, he always you know, had I, a, a ready response. Like he knew yeah. he just was ready. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. And wow. well, and I, I loved what you said, right? You you called it courageous integrity and um, defining it as staying true to Jesus no matter what the cost. And I, I was struck because I, I once heard somebody talk about integrity as living a fully integrated life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that integration that Jesus does between the father, the meditations of his prayer life and his word life, and then all of a sudden his disciples are there. I mean, it feels like some juice and all of that. So I'm 
curious about how, how do you check up against your own courageous integrity? Uh, as you know, I'm harder on myself than, I don't know. I'm pretty hard on myself. And so I, I tend to, uh, I know what I'm, I'm thinking, I know what I'm feeling. I know, you know, um, and I, I don't know. Um, I tend to beat myself up. I think I don't align more. Like I should be this more this way on the outside. Like I know what's on the inside or I should have more on the inside. Cause I know, um, what has been poured into me. Um, so it's a lot of, I don't know, questioning, um, like, am I really living this out? I mean, to have to, you know, this, cause you do this too. Like we, we have to go up on stage and like talk about this and, that's a huge check for me. Like if yeah. I can't, if I'm not living this out, um, it's really hard for me to get up on stage and tell anybody they should, should do it too. Right. So that's, that's a huge accountability piece that I have and I don't want to be disingenuous on stage. So um, if I, if I'm not living out, I, I probably will just to be honest, I'll probably neglect something in that, in that point. Cause I'm like, I can't, I can't talk about it right now. I still have to deal with it in my own life first. So I think that's a huge check that we have that maybe others, I know it's not helpful for everybody. It doesn't preach, but for me, I think that's just being authentic. And maybe for some other people who aren't pastors or, you know, preachers or, uh, you know, can you, are you living this out in your workplace, uh, in your schools? Um, you know, look at your life and compare to what you, you say you believe. And I think, I I love that integration. There needs to be a connection between inner and outer for sure. Yeah. I think one of the things that's so important and, and, you know, we've made no jokes about it here or uh, plenty of jokes about it here about how relational I am. Yeah. So for me, those having, having guys in my life who can call out the blind spots are, are critical. Right. And so like, Um, I, I really do believe in that kind of biblical sense that everybody needs a Paul and everybody needs a Timothy, right? So you should be discipling someone and then you should have someone who's who's kind of over you in the way that Jesus is over the his disciples. And um, you know, as you get older, that gets harder. That there's no mistake about that, right? Like you have yeah. to be more intentional and you have to be like and sometimes there's some people in my life who who I'm just like well, maybe you could just speak to this part of my life and, you know, maybe, you know, and you, and you kind of just cobble together this group of accountability that helps in a lot of different ways. It's, it's part of what I love about being on this staff team is that, you know, all of us kind of speak to different areas well, I think. And, mm-hmm. um, and so, you know, I think if you're listening to this and you're like, man, how do I live a more integrated life? I think one of the things you have to look at is that Jesus didn't do it alone. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, we, you know, as we jump into the text uh, a little bit more, one of the things that was really clear was these kind of different lives, right? You talked about um, the private life, the public life, the, you know, the afterlife, um, the present life and the inner life. Um, tell me where the, the origin story on that kind of mindset came to be as you were putting this message together. Man, you asked me these questions. I'm like, I wrote these like three, four weeks ago or more. Oh, no, I think that's... I wrote these like a month ago or it's at least so a different. month ago before I went on vacation. Um, you know, I'm always trying to like our theme this year is, you know, our, our title is Life According to Jesus. And so I don't remember what exactly hit. I don't know if I was reading something, listening to something, but I'm like, hmm, you know, Jesus, this is this is Jesus addressing all as, you know, all kinds of aspects of life and how does how does this intentional and um, courageous, um, what was my word? I can't even think of my word. Courageous integrity. That's the word. I lost my word. Uh, all that fits into these different areas of life. And so that's that's how I was just trying to bring it back to our major theme. I'm always trying to like reconnect things back to our, our theme of um, being formed and looking at the life of Jesus. Yeah. You know, one of the things I appreciate about the, this kind of um, interweaving of all the different lives is that it it really does illustrate the tension that I think many of us as believers feel 
when it comes to the different places that we show up. Yeah. Right. And so like, I, I love starting with the private life and, and um, Annie Downs, who's the queen of Christian podcasting, yeah. she says it's it's important to have a private life, but it's never okay to have a secret life. That's good. Yep, absolutely. How, how, um, how do you manage some of your private life stuff as someone who obviously has a platform and uh, and people look at? I mean, the, the fishbowl effect for pastors – can feel real. I, I'm not always sh- sure how real it is, but it certainly feels real at times. How do you manage that? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a great amount to me, I think, of, first of all, what you said, having people who know more about your private life. Um, and, you know, for me, th- those are more people, I would say, outside the church than inside the church. Uh, friends who know me for, since I was three years old or four years old and um, pastors who have pastored me since I was, you know, early twenties and they just know me more than anybody else. They know my weaknesses. They know my wounds. They know um, what I'm more susceptible to. And so, uh, you know, checking in with them um, and, you know, is, is really important and they check in with me. Um, I think that's huge. Um you know, your private world, that's, it, it, it's, it's a big discipline issue, right? I mean, this is where discipline really is important. And I'm, you know, the idea of self-control, self-discipline, uh, I think is huge in the Christian walk. Um, I don't want to say it comes just from you. I think there's a great role the Holy Spirit plays in all of this, but there is a role that we do play. And you, you gotta, you gotta, I love, I referenced the book, right? Ordering Your Private World. He speaks of your private life as a garden. And, and uh, how, how much do you tend to it? What do you put into it? Um, are you weeding it? Are you making sure the junk is taken out of it? Those kind of things you have to own. You have to own your private world um, because no one else can for you. It's, that's, the, that's the secret sauce, right? So people can ask questions and they can encourage you. But if you're not, if you're not gardening your garden well, it's going to show up somehow and somewhere in an ugly way. I, I strongly recommend if you haven't listened to Gordon McDonald's podcast with Carrie Newhoff. Yes. So oh good. my God, that's so good. I had to read ordering your private world in seminary and, yeah. um, but listening get, first of all, Gordon McDonald has this wonderful, voice of wisdom like when it's it like comes the grandpa up, you always wanted to have right i i think i was crying like while i was listening to i was like oh my you know cause yeah my grandpa died when i was young and it, yeah. you know i it's just different but i i strongly recommend the book but if you if you're not a book or if you're not a reader the i think carrie newhoff did two maybe three podcasts with yeah, least, with gordon yeah. and it was yeah. super super yeah. solid stuff there yeah yeah, he's oh. such a wise, older sage, um, gentle spirit, humble. I mean, he was humbled through that whole process of, yeah. like, you know, like with his sin issues. And um, but a man who's who's uh, you can just tell like he you could you could have any sort of anybody could have a conversation with him. And yet he's been counseling presidents. Right. I mean, like like he. He's just a really incredible figure. So uh, recommend that book. Recommend listening to whatever he's he's done. It's good stuff. Yeah. The, the other um, the other kind of lives that you talk about, they all start with this foundation of of the private life. And so I think one of the things that I was as I was listening to the sermon, one of the things that I was thinking about for today's conversation is is like if you don't know where to start, you know that was a big sermon. It was a a lot of text to cover as it is every single week. Um, if you don't know where to start, starting with your private life is the way to start. Yeah. That daily discipline, that the, the rule of life, that kind of morning routine, your, some people call it a quiet time. I I think it, I like for it to be a little bit more involved than that, but you know, a rhythm of regular checkups from the neck up, I think is just so crucial to all of that. Um, if somebody wanted to start that has never done it before, Dave, what's, what's the piece of advice you're going to give? 
These are great questions. Uh, and I wish I had more time to think about them. Because we don't, uh, these are good questions. So if someone wanted to start uh, focusing on their private life, um, I would say, all right, let's start very beginning of your morning. What's your very early morning routine? What are you putting in front of your face? The first thing you put in your face, um, what are your thoughts getting up in the morning? Um, and um, yeah, what are your, what's your thought life? How's your heart? These are the questions um, that I think you, you need to tend. Like if you, if you just got to think of your life, your inner life as a garden, and does Jesus have access to that? How much access does Jesus have to that, to speak into that? Um, are you willing to change? Are you willing to um, do the work to root out the weeds and the, just the lies and the, and the stuff that just is pulling you down? Um, who do you have access to? I think that's another great question to like who has access also to your garden because you shouldn't be the only one tending it. In the, in the sense of like people should know what's going on in your heart. So who's asking you the hard questions, find someone to do that. Um, and uh, I think those are great starting places. I mean, there's just a lot you should be doing, yeah. right? It's so important. Your heart is so important. This is why Paul, you know, Ephesians, he does not pray for the Ephesians to stay safe and to have whatever. He's like, I pray for your inner being. I pray that, you know, God would strengthen your inner being. That would be healthy and whole and, and it, you know, because um, it's so important. Everything flows from that. So, Yeah, I, I think that there, if there were two practices that I, I could give, and, and it's right in alignment with what you said, I, I would say to read the word every day, even on the days you don't want to. Yep. And, uh, and repent, right? So pull the weeds, right? Like, like if you it. can just... Yeah. You know, Jesus's first message when he comes out of the wilderness is repent and believe, right? And so sometimes yeah. for me, it's believe and repent, but like, I, you know, it's, um, I think that that's probably, you know, if you're not sure where to start in any of this, read God's word and start confessing <laughs> sins, right? Like, yeah. because yeah. if you don't have that posture of humility, and I've seen this a lot in believers, if you think that you're right all the time, then you're already wrong good yeah yeah and so repentance is that twofold it's confession but this desire to change like i want to turn i'm going to turn back to you jesus i want to turn back to your way of doing things and you can never go wrong with repentance um i just went on a great walk yesterday after church it was like in the afternoon later evening and um Man, I was just having, a, you know, like a, I was drawing close to God. I was listening to worship, but I'm like repenting too. I'm like, you know, I'm sorry for yeah. this. And I'm sorry for that. And it's just like, get that stuff out. Like, I don't want that in me anymore. Like I'm giving it to you, Jesus. Yeah. If, if those are some solid practices just to get started. And yep. I think if you want to order your private life, that's, that's really the best place to start with that. So yeah, yeah. some of those areas. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. So give us a little preview. Where are we going next in the Gospel of Luke, the second half of 12, uh, before we get on to our PRs for the week? Yeah. Well, uh, next up is the parable of the rich fool, talking about money and possessions and plans and, and all that. So that's going to be great. A lot, of, a lot of talk about surrender there and what that looks like. and uh... Worry and not to do it. Oh, man. <laughs> Who worries? Gosh. Everybody <laughs> struggles with worry, I think. So, yeah, a lot of good stuff. Um, yeah, my headspace right now, because I'm going to be writing tomorrow in chapter 13. I'm gonna, my headspace is, is uh, the narrow door passage, mm. but that's going to be a few weeks that's ahead. That's a tough passage, too. Oh, that's a great question. The guy asks, you know, are there only going to be a few people that get to go to heaven? And I love how Jesus answers. So that's a little teaser, but we'll get into that. Yeah, make sure you hit the subscribe button wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss those future episodes. Uh, so let's uh, wrap up this week's episode with our PRs, pastoral recommendations. You got one for us? Uh, do you have one for us? Well, I'll let you, I'll let you go first. I, you know, I was I, 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 I gave it away a little early. I was going to recommend the episode with um, Kerry Newhoff and Gary McDonald yeah. just a, as a way to, to talk about like um, – 
you know, what it means to listen to our elders and people who have, have been steeped in the f- faith and what that looks like. And it's just such a good episode. I think it's, uh, I'm looking for the episode number right now. Let me mm-hmm. see if I can find it. It is episode 297. Okay. 297, Gary McDonald, Gor- Gordon McDonald. I keep calling him Gary. Gosh, that's so. His friends call him Gary. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, I, okay. Yeah. Um, it's eight decades of wisdom is what it's called. Gordon McDonald shares eight decades of wisdom. So This is the Carrie was- Newhoff pack. Kerry Newhoff podcast, yeah, from 2019. Can you spell Newhoff for everybody who doesn't know how to spell Newhoff? Absolutely. It's N-I-E-U-W-H-O-F. That's not the way I would have spelled Newhoff, so I'm glad glad you covered that. Um, Yeah, my recommendation, I'll just just piggyback off what we already said. Um, If you've not read Private World, Ordering Your Private World, please do so. Um, It's it's worth the read for sure. Um, He was a pastor. He's talking to some, sometimes two pastors, but it's not just two pastors. So please um, read through whatever you need to, to get to the stuff that you need for you. So, amen. Well, guys, that's our podcast for today. As always, we're super thankful for you, our church family. If you need anything from us, we're easy to find. And uh, and thank you. Thank you for leaning in and wrestling with the theology and having the good discussions. None of this is worth it if you don't listen. So we appreciate you. Hit that subscribe button wherever you listen to podcasts, and we'll see you guys real soon.